doing a uh, Bible study, eight weeks, uh, drawing on themes from The Chosen, Season 2, and that will start on Thursday the 21st, uh, meeting at 6 o'clock. You watch the show on your, on your own, and then we'll meet together Thursdays at 6 o'clock to discuss the themes within the show. So please let Pastor Karen or myself know if you are interested in that. Any other announcements for the Lost Creekians? Pastor Powell, this is for both also. Okay. Tuesday, um, September 12th, there's a fundraiser for Tiger Treats, which is the local um, snacks, food, uh, meals that we provide for some kiddos at EJES. Um, and if you go to County Line on Tuesday at any time and have a coupon, which I have coupons over the church, I can run over and get them. Um, you just present the coupon and then 10% of your bill goes to the Tiger Treats. And which, which day is that? Is that it? Which date? Tuesday. This Tuesday? Yeah, the 12th. Yep. Okay, so this Tuesday the 12th, if you go out to the County Line restaurant with a coupon and uh, eat there, 10% of your bill will go to the Tiger Treats program, which is providing uh, snacks and uh, weekend meals for some of our uh, children in our area of the county that uh, may not get food over the weekend because they're not getting the school lunches and breakfasts. So uh, please contribute uh, generously to the, to the Tiger Treats program. Ah, there we are. to our order of worship, and let us begin with the opening prayer. Holy God, before time you named us, through time you redeemed us. You call us precious in your sight. May we love as you love. Holy One, through the turbulent waters, make us steady, your hands holding strong the fragile and weak. May we love as you love. God of justice, remove the chaff of our lives that keep us from hearing and following your call. May we love as you love. Amen. And in your bulletins is the hymn, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Am I supposed to start this? Yeah? Okay. Please rise if you are able. God of love, plant us. 
us in the soil of your grace. Nurture us with the strength of Christ, the mind of everlasting life. Enlighten us with the wisdom of your Spirit, which flows through us today and all days. Abide in us, that we may abide in you and live in your love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to ask you if you know. <laughs> the first reading this morning is taken from Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We'll now join um, responsibly in Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, who will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and power. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day. Or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the, or the destruction that wastes at new day. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look in your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your death. Angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the otter, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Our second reading this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So I'd uh, like to invite the uh, young people to come up. And if they want to sit on the uh, front uh, pew over here, that would be great. You guys going to come up? Come on up. Have a seat right over here. scary person is going to uh, come into the uh, building here. Right over there. <laughs> Doesn't look so scary at the moment, does he? Uh, this is Jeff, and uh, he is a firefighter. And I uh, asked him to come in because uh, he's going to show us some of the equipment that uh, 
firefighters wear to protect them when they're going into a burning building to put out a fire. That's a big, heavy suit, isn't it? With a lot of equipment on there. So a uh, Kevlar sleeve, like a hat, that they put over to protect their neck. That would be really important, don't you think, to keep the heat and flames off your neck? <laughs> now this is where it might get a little scary. Um, you get uh, they wear these masks. Uh, what is the what do you think the purpose of the mask is? Hmm? What do you think it is? <laughs> what do you guys think the mask's for? Okay, it's uh, actually, uh, they fill their tanks with air. I think if they were breathing pure oxygen in a fire, that would probably not be so good. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the mask protects their face from the smoke and the flames. And then they have that breather on the front that has a, that's connected to a, uh, an air tank. And um, that allows them to breathe air while they're in the, in you hear that? That allows them to be able to breathe there even when they're in a smoky room. Um, because when there's a fire, uh, first of all, the fire feeds on the air that's in the room, and so it's burning it all up. And then it's putting all that smoke up into the air, and the heat and the air go up. So where's the best place for you if you don't have the oxygen or the, the air tank? Where's the best place for you if you are, find yourself in a burning building? Down close to the ground. Have you ever been taught that? If, you, if you're in a, room, in a room that's on fire, instead of standing up and running around, you go down close to the ground because the good air is down here. But he can't be run, crawling around on his knees like that, can he? Because he's trying to get, get rid of the fire. So he puts on this air tank, and that allows him to stand up where there's smoke and where there's very little air, and he can still walk around, and he can still um, breathe and do the job that he needs to do. Anything else you want to add to all this? Um, you said about crawling around. We do crawl around sometimes when we're trying to find people. Okay. Sometimes the smoke's so heavy, you have to go down and you crawl around the field to find people. So I know it's hard to do, but go hide in closets or under your bed. But that's usually the place people want to go is in the closet or hide under their bed. And then we have a, it takes us a lot longer to find them. Okay. That's, that's our biggest challenge is if we know there's somebody in the house, we have to try to locate them. And we do have uh, cameras that we use infrared that we can look for your heat source and we can find bodies, but we only have one, so we have four firefighters in there, we only have one camera. That's the way you can do that. Okay. So if you should, right? So if you should find yourself in a burning building, and God hopes, you know, bless you all that you should never have to do that, but if you do, you want to stay close to the ground, but don't hide, or else they won't be able to find you, and call out for, for help all the time, and then they will uh, find you and, uh, and rescue you. Uh, but that's because they have this uh, air tank that they are able to uh, breathe with, even in, in a smoky, burning building. And I wanted to share that experience with, or that message with you, because in a, in a minute, we're going to uh, read a, a passage from the Bible in which Jesus says something very interesting. He says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. What do you think that means? Got any clue? He says, without me, you can do nothing. Any idea what? See, that's, that's kind of, might be kind of hard for us to understand, unless you've been out in a... Uh, 
um, out in a vineyard, uh, taking care of grapes and learning how grapes grow, it might be kind of hard to understand this whole idea of vine and branches. But here's something you can understand. We need ox uh, air to, to breathe and to live, right? If we are cut off from that air, then we die. And what Jesus is saying is he is our spiritual air. He is the, what we need to be able to breathe as Christians, to be in a relationship with God. And when we allow ourselves to get cut off from God, it would be like a firefighter going into a fire without his oxygen tank. So I encourage you to always keep Jesus close to you. Always ask Jesus, what would you have me do? Um, pray to Jesus every day. Uh, look for Jesus' guidance. Stay close to Jesus. Keep him as close to you as a firefighter keeps his air tank. All right. Thank you. Okay. And you fall over and collapse, this thing will go off. It starts to chirp and then the wind when it stops. That way we know that all of a sudden it's it's a very people know that the cat is down. Okay. So that chirping you heard was a warning sign that a fireman is standing standing or perhaps laying still. And it gets louder and louder so that if somebody's hurt, they can come and find that person. So let's uh, bow our heads and close our eyes and let's pray together. And would you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, thank you for your love for me. Help me stay close to you so I can grow in my love for you and others. Amen. All right. Can you all say thank you to Jeff for us for uh, putting this all on? <laughs> thank you for coming. You can go back to sit with your parents. Thank you, thank you General. You might want to keep that. You might want to keep that. If that one goes dead. according to St. John in the 15th chapter. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. And such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has a greater love than this, but to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. 
You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Can you be seated? If you get separated from your group while you're in a large crowd, do you know what the best thing to do is? What? Stay in one spot. See, we're learning lots of good, important things today. Yes, exactly. Stay in one spot. It's the best thing to do to help others to come find you. If you start moving around, you're more likely to be missed by the people who are looking for you. In this situation, the best thing to do is to stay put, to remain where you are, despite maybe your many impulses to move around and look for others elsewhere. And based off of what Jesus tells us this morning, the same thing can be true for our own faith, our own spiritual life. Sometimes there's this constant pull inside of us to seek out safety by doing good things to make up for bad things or by trying to find something that's more certain, better, more innovative, more spiritual to help us in our life to move forward. But Jesus' directions to his disciples this morning are that they should remain in God's love, to abide in God's love. Jesus describes himself as a vine and that we are his branches. And we hear him encourage us, the one who remains in me and I in him is the one who bears much fruit. Because without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown away. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. But if you remain in me, my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done. For my Father is glorified by this. And you continue to bear much fruit to be my disciples. And as Jesus continues, he stays on this theme of remaining and staying put. That you are where you need to be. Because you are in God's love. And in God's love, you are safe. As the Father has loved me, so also I have loved you. Remain in my love. God has loved you with that same love that the Father loves his Son. It is complete. It is total. It is an uncompromising love that sacrifices all things to bring you back to himself. This is what our sins do to us. They separate us from God. They can divide us from God. But then God gave to us the greatest expression of love that one can have. There is no greater love than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. And this is exactly what Jesus did for us. Jesus' chief love of working was to lay down his life for his friends. And he calls each of us his friends. Normally, if someone lays down their life to save someone else, it's only for a moment. And many in our first responders community probably have more experience with this than most of us do. To jump in front of a bullet for someone. To run into a burning building to save someone. To put your own self at personal risk. For a complete stranger. And while those moments are so brave and courageous and important, 
with Jesus, this laying down of his life for others was not just limited to one moment, but was eternal and everlasting. When he laid down his life for us, for his friends, there were great ramifications for us individually and for all of the world. Jesus wasn't just saving us from a physical death. He was rescuing us from eternal death. Laying down his life, he paid for our sins on the cross. And there was no limit to Jesus' love. There is nothing temporary in the blessings that God gives us through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And this is why Jesus is so adamant to remind us again and again to remain in my love. Because to do otherwise would be to leave all of these blessings and these gifts that God has given us. If I let Jesus take a back seat in my life, to go after the things that I work for, to go after family, friends, anything, I jeopardize remaining in that love. So how do we remain in Jesus' love? Before we understand that, I think it's important to remember how we got into the sphere of Jesus' love in the first place. Jesus is very clear that he has not that that this has nothing to do with what we do and everything to do with what Jesus does. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Jesus decided to save you, to die for you. He sent the Holy Spirit through his word to create faith in our hearts, which brought us from death and unbelief to a new life lived in him. Everything that we are or have to Jesus is because of Jesus, not us. We didn't choose any of this. He chose it for us and made it happen. We know the spiritual results of Jesus' work, of choosing us. But there are external results, too. There's evidence in your life of what Jesus has done. Jesus says that he chose us, appointed us to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will endure. We are branches connected to the vine, branches that are healthy, that draw nourishment from the trunk of the vine and bear abundant fruit. God's works are the evidence of our God-given faith. These works are caused by Jesus' love for us that we then share with others as an outward expression of our faith in God. Jesus says that the best way to express that love, to express our thanks to him in our life, is by serving each other. In fact, showing love to others is the completion of the love that Jesus has given us. That it is made more full by sharing. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that my joy continue to be in you and that your joy may be complete. And this is my command, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. We know that we can't love in exactly the same way that Jesus loved. At least I hope we know. It would be very hard to live up to, to love exactly the way that Jesus loved us. Nothing we do or sacrifice for someone else will impact them the way that Jesus' love does. But that's not what Jesus is asking us to do. Jesus is not saying to love like he did. Jesus is telling us to love in the ways that he showed us. That now we are free to love because of the ways that Jesus frees us from sin and death. When he says that we should love like he does, he's speaking about the spirit of love, 
the motivation of that love. That we do not show love to someone to get something in return. We show love to someone just to love them, to sacrifice for them. Maybe in our daily lives, we're not laying down our life for a friend, but we're still sacrificing in many different ways. There's always opportunities to show Christ's love to those you most love in your life and even to complete strangers. Laying down your life may mean sacrificing that time that you had set aside for something really fun that you were looking forward to, to help someone in their time of need. It may mean delaying something you had planned to talk with someone who's going through something difficult. It means using your time, money, energy, whatever gifts that God has given you to help someone who has a need. And by this, you show your connection to the Savior. You show that you remain in God's love. And that goes beyond your family and beyond your friends, beyond your sisters and brothers in Christ. This self-sacrificing love can and should be shown to all. The stranger, the neighbor you don't get along with, the person who seems to hate you with no reason. Your response, self-sacrificing love. Earlier in this reading, Jesus had said, Just as I have loved you, so also you are to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Remain in God's love that is freely given to you. There is nothing that you did to deserve it. God gives it freely. Remain in God's love by loving as he loved. Remain in God's love because that love will be with you forever. Amen. to rise as you are able. Sing our next hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty.
We invite all of our first responders to do you. come forward. <laughs> I know we also have some family responders too. If you could come forward and represent them, also. reminded of the dreadful events of 9-11. But, but it is appropriate that we use this time to also remember those who live out their calling from God in service to the community as first responders, firefighters, police, and EMTs. Sisters and brothers, God has called you to a ministry of care for others in moments of danger and crisis. Trusting that God has equipped you with gifts for that service and empowered you for this ministry. Will you seek to serve God in word and deed through your work and your rest, giving thanks to God for this call? I will, and I ask God to help me. And at this time, we're going to give blessings for our first responders, and we also have um, these crosses. Um, that are, are symbols of Jesus' life-giving power through the sacrifice. So. And uh, let's uh, close in this part of our service in prayer. <clears throat> Protecting God, through faith in Jesus Christ, you graft us into your family. We care for these, your servants, keeping them from all harm and danger, giving them courage and wisdom for stressful situations, and helping them serve your people in need. Surround them with the support of others. Encourage us all to live out our calling in service to your earth and its people. Amen. Amen. And I did uh, just want to share with you that the fire company and EMS, uh, especially the fire company, that um, are looking for volunteers, uh, not just for those who would be able to respond to a fire or an accident, but also just to uh, help out with the auxiliary, to help them with all the different activities that they do for our community. So anybody who's interested in uh, participating, uh, talk to Jeff. <laughs> If you would turn in your bulletins, oh, you got this. Uh, Sue, Peggy here is going to do the uh, various <laughs> activities. As children of God, we are bold to pray for those in need and for all creation. Servant of your people, help your church discover more and more joy in our work. Prayer and service to the world. Lead our faith community boldly into generous acts of caring for others. God of mercy. Creator of earth and stars, our technology has filled us with wonder at the multitude of distant stars. Now make us your hands to tend and steward the earth. God of mercy. Proclaimer of truth and peace, use our voices to speak for justice guide leaders of nations and communities to seek peace and reconciliation in the face of threats and violence. God
God of mercy, hear our prayer. Seeker of the lost, use our hands to serve those who are lonely, forgotten, hurting, angry, broken, grieving, or ill. Hear especially the prayers we lift to you in the silence of this time. Protector of all, surround first responders with the comfort of your everlasting promise of love and mercy. Keep them safe from harm and grant courage in danger, calm in emergencies, and wisdom in unexpected situations. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Even as we ask your blessing on those serving as first responders, we remember with thanksgiving those who have served you faithfully in the past and who now rest from their labors. We remember especially those we now name before you. Keep us in union with all your saints and bring us with them to the joyous feast of heaven. Offering our hands for service, we commend these and all our prayers to you, O God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another, however you feel comfortable. <laughs> This morning, there's a basket in the back. Um, all loose offering will be going to the fire hall. Uh, if you can join me with the doxology. <clears throat> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time and trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For communion this morning, uh, it will be in tension, so we will be dipping the bread in the grape juice. And as Pastor Graham mentioned, if you'd like a gluten-free wafer, please let us know. Or if you'd like to come forward and receive a blessing, just cross your hands over your heart. Uh, please join us in our uh, Lamb of God invitation communion. Lamb of God, you take away.
body of Christ broken for you. Is there anyone else who needs us to bring communion? Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise and thank you for meeting us and restoring us in this field. Renew our hands for your work, O God, today and every day. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. Let's join together in singing God of grace and God of glory. God of grace.